How are you? Good. What's going on? Oh, God. Everything. Your skin looks good. I think she muted herself again. Oh. Myself. <laughs> it's okay. Your around. skin looks so good. You look so young. Oh, thanks. I'm not feeling young. I might just pop my hair up one sec. You look got good. so much product in it from an event yesterday, and I thought I could get away with it, but no. Let's not do that. How are you? I'm good. I miss you. How was the? How is your cutie daughter doing? I love seeing her oh, on Instagram. Oh, she's so good. She's um definitely got like my personality though, which I was hoping it would go the other way and she'd get Josh's. <laughs> uh, well, we like your sassy personality, but Josh is very calm. That He's is so calm, a lot calmer <laughs> than me, and like not as manipulative and deceiving. <laughs> but that's what we love about you. Listen, you have a little person <laughs> in you. you I know, but I don't love you. it about my daughter. I can't see you at all now. Oh, you can't? It's just one know. big screen of me. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there that's better. Do you like that layout better, Amir? Hi, Hannah. Yes. Hi, Monica, Monica. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Do you prefer it like this, or should we do a solo layout of Hannah? And we can always like repurpose this. that. You like this? Okay, you're fine. Yeah, with let's this. keep okay. that. And, um, and if Hannah doesn't know, uh, Monica does all about the tea. So that's an amazing website. So I just wanted to oh, promote my co host. Yes. Yeah, see? <laughs> Monica's course. very humble, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uplift. <laughs> no, I thought, I, thought I, I like immediately thought of the two T's, and I'm like, I thought that was Tamara and Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, girl. This is all about the tea. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the Thank vault. Thank you. You are welcome, so welcome, honey. Very happy to be here. I know we're so excited. Where are you living again now? Are you, are you, cause I know you were in Europe for a little bit and then you're back, are you back home? Yes. Yeah. I'm in Sydney oh, now. Oh, you're in yeah. Sydney. Okay. Lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely. Back in the house and uh, Josh has just started work. He was made redundant a while ago. So that's been fun. And oh. um, so he's just started work. So I'm basically just like a single parent now again. <laughs> oh. oh God. Uh, yeah, anyway. I always feel for the for the moms out there. You and Monica both. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, it's like it's just such a juggling act. And I think you know, even like I had an event yesterday, and then I've got another event tonight. And I just went like, I just want to like eat a steak sandwich and watch some Lincoln Lawyer and like go to bed, you know. <laughs> and it's like, but like the event tonight as well is it's like a documentary. So mm -hmm. it's like it's not even like for me. I'm I'm kind of doing trying to do a lot of events at the moment that's like good for networking and stuff but I'm like you're gonna eat a canapé and then sit and watch a documentary like it's not a big networking opportunity and like I'm just tired mm -hmm. I feel you mm -hmm. I get it mm -hmm. listen I get it but you got to get out there and network I know it's hard um I want to start with your school like how is that going I know you're doing a uh, yachting school with uh right you're doing are you still working on that I probably won't talk about that on the pod if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Just yeah, yeah, just because I'm just getting ready to sell it, so there's not oh, really like yeah. that's exciting yeah. though. Okay, we won't talk about it, but we will. Yes. That out. But, yeah, I just exciting. wouldn't. Yeah, I just wouldn't want anything like, I guess, coming out before it's kind of done. Okay. You know. Yeah. No problem. No problem, love. That's exciting though. Um, so let's start with a little, I want to talk about a little bit about Below Deck and then I, I want to dive in and I know you watch stuff on Bravo. So I want to talk about OC. I want to talk about any other shows you're watching. So we want to get your yes. takes. But just quickly, everyone obviously knows you from Below Deck. So I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. How do you feel about, you know, the direction the show is taken? Like, it, I feel like now it's kind of like a formula where I felt like when you were on it, it felt a little bit more organic. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like, you know, gosh, I think we filmed the first season in like 2015. Um, you know, technology, social media, everything has just evolved in such a massive way since then. And you can kind of see now that like, to be honest with you, like in season one, I remember Julia 
because uh, she was English and I'm Australian. And both of us, like, we couldn't stream Bravo shows or anything, so we actually genuinely hadn't watched it at that stage. And we were just, like, running into each other going, what on earth is going on? And I feel like it had, like, some authenticity back then because we were real yachties. It's what we did. It was our jobs. And we weren't that kind of obsessed with the fame side of things, you know? And I think a lot of a lot of the cast now, not all of them, but a lot of them are coming on definitely for the fame side, the Instagram followers to promote their OnlyFans or whatever they're doing, you know? So mm -hmm. I think a little bit of the authenticity has, has been lost from the show. And I kind of feel like it might be a little oversaturated now as well. It's like, it's okay if there's like a time period in the year where we don't have Below Deck on. <laughs> It's right. There's so many spinoffs now. It is oh. obscene. So you know what? Really? I want to I wanna get down and dirty, Hannah. <laughs> yeah. Hit me. How what, dirty are we getting? <laughs> uh, let's just get a little dirty, a little messy. What's your relationship like now with Captain Sandy? Um, She's like, I think she's an interesting human being, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that, um, so she... Um, I think, I, I don't know, she reached out when she was coming to Sydney um, and kind of said that she wanted to have a chat. Um, and so I sat down and had a chat with her, but she's just sandy, you know. Mm -hmm. I kind of said to her, I was mm -hmm. like, if you can just, like, keep this between us, not talk about it in the press, and then it was, like, the next morning. <laughs> 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 I'm like, sandy. It was everywhere. Yeah, and I don't even actually think it's like a malicious thing. Mm -hmm. I just think it's just her. And you've kind of just got to take her for what it is. The thing that I guess that benefited um, both her and I was being able to have like quite an open and honest conversation about things that the other person wasn't aware of in the mm -hmm. situation that we went through. So I think that really helped because, you know, there was some things that I didn't know that was going on and there was things that she didn't know that was going on. So, you know, I don't think that we will ever, you know, be best friends. We're not going to go skiing in Aspen together or anything like that. Right. But I also feel like, you know, many years have passed and especially me, I'm at such a different stage in my mm -hmm. life now that I just go, I don't really have any time for to hold on to any kind of anger or resentment. You know, I have my mother-in-law for that. <laughs> I love that. Did she at least apologize to you though? Yeah, I think, yeah, she, she, she definitely apologized for not being aware of the situation that I was in, you know? Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So it was a really calm kind of, energy mm -hmm. um there was no you know like of course like I think that sometimes we always feel like with Bravo people it's like got to be all this drama and it's like a lot of people are you know kind of put that on a little bit when there's a camera and when there's no camera you can actually just have a very calm conversation about it so yeah well I I, I hope she realized she made a big mistake because honestly there is no below deck med without you you are oh. that show seriously yeah, I think she actually thought that I would leave that season and then just come back the next season. Oh. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I, I don't know how that would have worked, but I, right. yeah, I, I don't know if she realized, but then as well, you know, I think by the time they were filming the next season, I was pregnant and had moved on. And to be honest mm -hmm. with you, season five as well for me I was definitely just there for money you know right? there was yeah yeah like to be completely honest with you I wasn't I didn't you know I think the hard thing that sometimes you know people don't realize is like obviously those nights out and things like that you have so little sleep and such mm -hmm. massive sleep deprivation that even if you're not like drinking a lot you can still have like blackout periods where you don't remember things um, mm -hmm. because of the alcohol. And for me, with my anxiety, I could never eat too much while I was filming. Mm. So the mixture of those things didn't work. And because I'd already met my now husband, Josh, I knew that the best thing I could do was basically not drink too much, you mm. know? Because right. I was like, yeah. I don't want to be waking up in the morning going, I don't remember getting home. You know, and it's not even like a normal situation where you're like, oh, no, I don't remember getting home. It's like, oh, I don't remember getting home and I've got nine months to wait. 
until I see it on television. <laughs> how excited is that? How amazing right. anxiety is that? Right. I was like, uh-uh. So, like, I was actually, like, taking my um, Kindle on nights out. And so I'd, like, get on the dance floor, give it a little boogie, and then I'd be, like, out the back with a psychological thriller. So I was probably not the best television in season five. Smart, a smart lady, though. Very I smart. love it. I love mm-hmm. it. You were, you were a step ahead of most reality people because they don't, like, they go into it and they kind of kid themselves, right? Being on a boat, going out with the anxiety, it's, like, a lot. So I, mm-hmm. I'm happy that you, like, did some self-preservation. Were there any mm-hmm. moments, like, obviously at that point, you kind of knew the machine that Below Deck was. Was there any Mm. moments where they just, the producers kind of faked it? Like, that's not how it went down. Like, was there anything like that stands Um, out? Yeah, I think probably the thing that annoyed me the most that was left out, um, particularly like in season five, was um, the the crew day off when I couldn't go because I was sick. I actually ended up in hospital that night. because I was so dehydrated um, from being so sick. And that that was the next morning that Malia came at me about these bloody cabin arrangements. And I was like, you're my roommate. You know that mm-hmm. I got in at like 2 a.m. from mm-hmm. hospital. And the fact that like that kind of wasn't actually shown, it was like that was quite, to me, like that's quite nasty to be like, having this massive fight with somebody about a room arrangement when you know they spent the night in hospital is just like dude like yeah back off a little bit like I get that you want it like you've got your priorities and stuff but I'm still a human being and even if you don't like me like you can still go like hey maybe we'll just leave it until next charter where she hasn't like spent the night in hospital so to me I was like with production it was a bit like you had camera like a camera there you Mm -hmm. could have shown very easily, you know, and also to kind of cement the fact that I wasn't just like not wanting to be there. I genuinely was sick because no one's going to like pull a sickie from a crew day off and then actually back it up by going to hospital. (laughs) And so when I was watching it, I was kind of like, well, these people like she's faking, she's faking. I'm like, look, if I didn't want to like hang out with you, I just had to want to hang out with you or I would have come (laughs) so that production with me uh-huh. and I just would have sat in the corner and read my book like with a glass of wine on a sun lounger that's a lot better than sitting inside like in my tiny cabin in a boat all day it's like so that kind of annoyed me a bit that's what's your relationship with uh Amelia like today are you do nothing. you have a relationship nothing I would imagine so no. after what she no. did yeah, yeah no and I think to be honest with you that's probably one of the only humans in my life that I do still hold like I said something pretty bitchy Absolutely. when I was watching like that yeah. winter house. Uh-huh. I was like, hmm. <laughs> Karma. Oh, you, you just keep uh-huh. spitting into dude's mouth, sweetie, and I'll sit here with my cute <laughs> husband and cute kid. Have a great uh-huh. life. Uh, winning, right? In the winning circle. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm still a little bit like around with her because I just, yeah. What she did was I don't blame you. Ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. It really was. And I remember watching Winter House and being like, I wonder if Hannah's going to watch this and what her face is. Because I love your faces. Like, your faces <laughs> on Below Deck. The best. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Did you know I genuinely did not know that I was like that until I was on Below Deck? I love you. And even my husband now, like, if we're having, like, a discussion or an argument or something, he's like, can you just, like, chill with your fucking face? And I was like, I don't know. I'm not aware. He's like, well, you look like you want to kill me. And I'm like, well, you know, if the face you doesn't. Can. Face does not lie. Me and my no. dad was funny. He would make dinner and he'd be like, he'd do your face and be like, bon appetit. Remember when you would put the plates down sometimes when you didn't like the guests? And it was yes. like this venom. I love, it was just, it's so good. Like, I'm telling you that there's someone out there, like there's drag queens doing Hannah below deck. I'm telling you. Like that's I've happening because it's so shady. I've so happy in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me it's getting so drag good. queens to do anything. I'd be like, oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> so good. So can, I, can I ask, because I've always wondered, do you think there was some jealousy involved with her reporting you? Malia? Yeah. No, I honestly think that she is really used to getting her own way. Mm. Um, 
And to be honest with you, like, I don't know, I think there was probably like, I remember there was something like, oh, but they were doing cabin checks. And so I radioed saying like, hey, guys, we're doing cabin checks. And she's like, that's not how things work. And this is protocol. And I'm like, babe, oh. I've not worked on a boat unless there's cameras on it in like five years. Right. If, if I've done something wrong or like, I don't know, like all these new rules. We didn't have cabin checks when I worked on like boats without cameras on them, you know. So like if I've, you know, just talk to me like and I don't know, I know this sounds like to me it's such a contradiction if you're like maritime law, professionalism, blah, blah, blah. What the fuck mm -hmm. are you doing on below deck? <laughs> it makes no sense to me. Right, yeah. Like if you're really like the industry itself mm -hmm. hates below deck and yeah, they think that everyone imagine. that goes on below deck, yeah, is like ruining their career, they're not professional, blah, blah, blah. So it's like you've kind of you're contradicting yourself by saying you're this massive professional and all of that. And you're on below but, deck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you want to be super yeah. professional, go on a super professional boat. Right. Like, exactly. exactly. Not exactly. TV. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a bit weird. I agree. I agree. Doesn't it? It's not, it's the math is not mathing, especially when she got into it with her ex and the galley. I'm like, if you're so the face of professionalism, you wouldn't be doing that. Well, also like, she preaches professionalism and then it was like the season before she was hooking up with her boss and the chef at the same time i'm like spill the tea honey <laughs> <laughs> you can't like you can't have your cake and eat it too you're either professional or you're not professional you mm -hmm. can't just choose where you're gonna be you know like oh it's maritime law so and i'm such a good yachty that i have to report her but then oh, you're doing other things that are like yeah. contradicting that so it was just a bit weird I can't say I understand her. Did not make sense. Right. Absolutely. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It, it's, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the best part about you being involved with the show for me personally was the way that a lot of people, I, I got a lot of DMs about this when I interviewed you on my other podcast, is that the way that you became kind of this face of like asking, advocating for yourself, standing up for yourself, self-care, mm -hmm. like mental health awareness like so many people were really touched because i think a lot of people in that position would have felt bullied by everyone would have been like i should just like power through and push and you did a lot of that but you also advocated for yourself on every step so mm -hmm. as someone i struggle with a lot of anxiety like it's really inspiring that you did that like how did you find the strength because it's you know you're tired you're overworked you're exhausted and then people are coming at you from left and right like yeah it was quite inspiring yeah. So um, the exec producer, Nadine, on Below Deck Mediterranean is is to this day still one of my closest friends. And we kind of had this motto that we would just use on each other, like, because it's obviously hard on them as well. Like production have their own issues. We have our own issues. But we just walk past each other. Or if I knew she was in the control room and I like I had a camera on me on my own, I would just say it's only a moment in time. And she would know that's me like going like, okay, we got this. Like, and I think that's what you have to do because it is, it's actually so much harder and so much more full on than it looks on uh, the television because obviously, you know, they have so much content. Like they're filming 24 seven with like so many fixed cameras, so many moving cameras. And there's so many storylines. So there's sometimes like full storylines that are edited out the show because they simply can't put them in there. Um, so sometimes, you know, say for example, if you saw like a beach picnic or a theme night or something, it's like if there's like two people that are maybe like floating or have a love interest, that will make the show. But sometimes there's like full theme nights that you don't see. Or sometimes they, you know, They'll show like two guests going to bed and then some crew going to bed, but they don't show that like three of the guests stayed up till like five in the morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, like if you're up till five in the morning, you get to bed at six and then you've got to be up for a guest departure at 10 and then you work all day and then you're out in a club all night. It's just so exhausting. Of, yeah. yeah. And I've actually heard that it's gotten a lot better now um, mm -hmm. in terms of that kind of stuff. There's like, a little more, you know, leeway in terms of rest and things like that. But I think that's the same with all reality TV. If you look at what was going on in 2015, 2016 in reality TV, 
things have changed a lot in the last eight years in terms of, you know, some structure in place for the rights of the people, you know, of people filming mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and what have you, which is a good thing because, you know, it was getting pretty dark, especially like in the UK for for a minute there. So yeah, yeah with Love Island, a lot of people mm. that was really bad. Mm. Yeah. It was, yeah. Can and I-, I think as well, it's just so different because like when I started, like I had to get an Instagram account because I didn't have an Instagram when oh, I joined, yeah. you know? And wow. I was like, oh my God, it's fine. I have Facebook. And they're like, can you just get Instagram, please? <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur. I'm the like, word. my MySpace yeah. is still active. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think the pressure, you know, with all the trolls and social media mm. and everyone giving their opinions about you at all times, like, that gets a lot as well. So, but there was also a lot of benefit to it because I used to kind of do, like, my season was, like, six months in the med. So I basically worked six months on, six months off. And then with all the pickup interviews for Below Deck, it was like you couldn't really get a normal job. So then I'd do like the filming for six weeks, which was so crazy, and then have a few months off. And then I'd be back and forth to LA and then New York for Watch What Happens Live. But I had like a really nice life because I just got to travel the rest of the time. So that was definitely one of the reasons I kept going back as well was not the show, the life I got after the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nice. Um, has watching the entire series franchise below deck, below deck yachting med, was there any series, any one particular thing that ever happened on any of those series that was extremely triggering to you that you would like to talk about? Um, I guess, you know, there was a incident on below deck down under, Mm -hmm. um, you know, where the guy was like naked and went into the girl's cabin. I found that yeah. very triggering, very scary. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I found that to be quite confronting. And like, I would have, you know, like I knew Aisha's past as well. And because I'm a very close friend of hers, it was very like hard for me to watch my friend go through something that I knew would be Mm. triggering her in such a massive way Mm. um and then I think to be honest the way that so I think that was the second stew and the way the third stew reacted to it made my blood boil because there is so much shit that women have to deal with in the world so for another female to be going like oh if he'd come in my cabin I would have like welcomed him instead of looking at the situation as it happens and showing compassion and kindness and grace the other girl made it into something that it wasn't and that was just really disgusting to me so it was you know a lot of a lot of care for Asia and then a lot of anger towards you know towards the kind of third stew who wasn't showing the kind of compassion that you need in such a sensitive situation as that Absolutely. I agree. Also, Peter's controversial social media posts. Mm. Yikes. That wasn't shocking to me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Please elaborate. (laughs) I guess like I had heard Mm -hmm. examples of that mentality Mm. while we were filming. Um, I would say and look, I'm by no means, I don't make excuses for anyone's bad behavior. I believe that a lot of, there's a lot of information out there. So this is not an excuse, but I do think that in some instances, you can be a product of the environment you are raised in. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm not going into detail because it's not my, my story to tell, but I know what I know what happened with one of his parental figures while we were filming and that did break my heart because Mm. we should, our parents should be there to protect us and to love us Um, and unfortunately some people don't do that with their children. So it was hard with Pete because I guess, yeah, there was a certain amount of compassion that I did actually have. And that's not making excuses 
for his behavior, but I'm a human and, you know, mm -hmm when I see that behavior to another human by somebody that you're supposed to trust and that's supposed to love you, that I will always have compassion then because, you know, you, so kind kids, of you. yeah, well, you can, you mold children, you know, mm -hmm. yep. and if you're not doing that when they're children, that can make them into not nice or, uneducated adults mm -hmm. and that yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. no that's very astute and even when that happened i was talking to some of my friends who are like straight men and they were like well he was like he because i was like that's sexual assault and they're like no it's not because i think for a lot of men sexual assault in that like what happened in that cabin and him going in naked they only think of rape they yeah. don't think uh, there's a there's so many great it's like, broad yeah it's broad it's broad and a lot of men don't know that so i love that there was an opportunity to have that conversation and also the way that both of them were fired that third Stu and him like yeah. I, I was like okay this is how it should be handled and yes could it have been handled better sure but i like the way that everyone kind of it, it wasn't you know i feel like 10 years ago it might have been like okay well let's just move on and you know and laugh like, it off and yeah. then the next day you'd be in the crew mess and you'd be laughing about it. And it's like, that's mm -hmm. not okay, you know? And I feel like hopefully we're starting to learn a little bit that you don't need to rape somebody to sexually assault them, you know? Mm -hmm. And invading anyone's space, especially somewhere like your bed, just you're at work, you know? Mm -hmm. You are at work. And Absolutely. for somebody to invade your space like that is just so disgusting. I think it's sick. And, you know, I used to work the door at a club and being a gay man, a lot of women actually would like feel me up, grab mm. my ass, smack my ass. Someone grabbed me like on my crotch once. I was like, this is not okay. And I, when I would no. say something, they're like, well, I'm a straight girl. You're gay. Like, you don't care. And it's like, even that, like, I've been it's my was not body. vocal about it. It's my body. Yeah. You're, you're invading my Absolutely. airspace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's very frustrating. Yeah, it's totally inappropriate. No, it's yeah, it's it's yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a very, it's a very, you know, I know this is not a political podcast, but it's a very like toxic kind of worldwide environment at the moment. So I'm really hoping that it gets better. That's all we can hope for. And I think mm -hmm. with people having these conversations and people refusing to allow, like even the way that sometimes I get kind of treated like an accessory as a gay man. Like, oh, I want you as my gay best friend. I'm kind of acknowledging those and being like, that's not okay. Do you want to be my friend because you like who I am? Or do you want a gay friend? That's a mm -hmm. very, so even having those conversations, I think hopefully will make things better. And I think that, yeah. you know, moms like you that are raising daughters that you're being intentional with your parenting, that's going to continue to create, you know, women who are strong and take up space and all of that. So I hope that the imposter yeah. syndrome will go away slow, slowly, you know? Yeah. No, well, it's amazing. Over here in Australia, um, they've just passed a legislation to make social media illegal for children under 16. I love yeah, we'll that. have that here too, somewhat. So you do? Somewhat. There's, there's a new legislation where they have to register and get their parents' permission. But, I mean, it's not illegal, but yeah. they're kind of regulated. Yeah. No, and I think that's so important. Like, mm -hmm. I'm petrified of my daughter going on social media. I'm like, do not search the hashtag Hannah Ferrer. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be like June, June, Hannah. June, June, uh -huh. Hannah. <laughs> so I hear that in my head all the time, by the way, Hannah. I'm always hearing that in the back of my yeah. head. Aww. Well, no, it was so cute because when Ava was like two years old, she started going around the house and she'd be like, like she'd say like a random name. Like if my girlfriend was over, she's like, Ash, Ash, Ava, Ash, Ash, Aww. Ava. And I was like, where is she gotten this from? It's and so I realized it's sweet. because, no, she hears it when I do cameos because that's how uh -huh. everyone asked me to start oh, my cameos. Right. So like her whole life, she would have just heard me going like, <laughs> Jane, Jane, Hannah, Peter, Peter, Hannah. And then she's like, is that just how you communicate? I'm like, no, babe, it's just cameo. I do that. love that. That's the best thing I've heard in a while. Oh, that made me uh, yeah, funny. she's turning into a sassy little thing now, I tell you. Speaking of social media, were you surprised with the overwhelming support you got after you were let go? 
Um, I, I think I was surprised, but to be honest with you, I was like eight months pregnant mm. and I had definitely put like myself into a bubble mm-hmm. because we were in lockdown and I just wanted to make sure that I was doing everything that I could to, for my health and to look mm-hmm. after my child. And so I was really mm-hmm. staying a lot off social media and so I knew that the response was positive, but I wasn't looking at Instagram or Twitter or anything right. like that because I just, you know, I remember the one comment that like really threw me when I was like six months pregnant is someone commented on my um, Instagram going, I hope your baby has colic. And I was just what? like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and that then was, like, I've not, that's, that's different. It's very strange, but I think because I was like hormonal and everything, it was like anyone Uh wishing, even like if somebody said, I wish that your daughter had a pimple on her chin, Mm -hmm. I would take it the same Mm -hmm. way. I'm like, if you wish anything bad for this beautiful being I'm creating, Mm -hmm. like I was in floods of tears. Like Josh had to come Mm -hmm. home. I was like, I was so upset. And he's like, honey, you just got to, put yourself in a bubble, like know that you're happy, know that we're happy and just look after yourself. So yeah, Mm -hmm. it was lovely to see the support. And I must admit, like after she was born, like a lot of nights sitting up breastfeeding and things like that, um, I would read like the more the DMs and the amount of people that just said like, you, you know, thank you for sharing your journey, even though Mm -hmm. the anxiety thing was kind of spun on the, at the end because of the Valium. Um, like you made me feel less alone. I've never seen anyone have the same physical symptoms as me. I thought I was crazy. So seeing somebody who is like strong and powerful and stands up to people and works hard and has their shit together, you know, even though I didn't really, but it was like, they were kind of going to like, you've given me hope. So that was, that made sharing my anxiety journey worth it. Cause even if it just helped you know, some people to feel less alone in their anxiety, like that was worth it. Amazing. Yeah. I love, I love that. that. I love that. That's wonderful. Um, Hannah, let, what shows are you watching on Bravo? I know you, you got some good takes. You got some good. <laughs> so obviously the OC. Yes. I'm watching <laughs> Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, failing. I'm dragging myself through New York. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, yeah. Mm, girl. So and it was bad. funny because the other day I literally put up a story and I was like, is it just that the OC is so good at the moment? And so like is as crazy and good as it always is. Like, so good. And obviously Potomac. Um, oh, so but yeah, no, I I just, New York, I'm like, if I hear fucking Pavlova one more time. <laughs> I actually <laughs> made my husband make me a pavlova on the weekend. It's, I can show you. It's in my fridge. Amazing. She made me crave pavlova because all I heard about was pavlova for 43 minutes. Mm-hmm. So good. So, mm-hmm. so good. What are your thoughts on Tamara and oh. uh, Shannon and that whole dynamic? So, look, I don't think getting behind the wheel when you're drunk is a good idea. No, we don't condone that. I don't that. think right. anyone's arguing with that. Like, especially, she said it really well herself. In today's day and age, there's really no excuses for a DUI. No. Like, no. get on your phone, you have money, call an Uber. Um, mm-hmm. I found these days, like, even if I think that there's like a possibility I'm going to have, because in Australia, I don't know if it's the same in America, you can probably have about two small glasses of wine over two hours and drive. Um, but even these days, I'm like, I just, I don't even want to be thinking about it. If there's mm-hmm. potential, I'm going to have over one standard drink, I would just Uber, you know? Um, so I don't think anyone's arguing with that. Now, how Tamara went about it is was just to me, I'm like, why is the internet in shock? This is just very classic <laughs> Like, right. yeah, I, I was, my jaw was not on the ground. She was gross. She was disgusting. I, but like, to me, that's kind of just what I expect from Tamara. So it wasn't shocking. So um, what I didn't like a lot in this reunion that's just aired, 
I really did not like Heather and Emily mm, going yeah. at Katie like that. Right. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, I just feel like that is such a sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. And there's also like, I don't think that you should bulldoze people into talking about things that they might not be ready to talk about on such mm -hmm. a public platform. Like we don't know what happened with Katie. Like we don't know the situation, why right. she had to leave so quickly. We don't know if she was had to go to a shelter and you're kind of shaming her about mm -hmm. having to leave her children so that she could get her life back on track so she could look after them properly. What? Because she said you called the paps. It's just so uneven and yeah. so gross. Like this poor woman, I just feel like she would be would have been sitting there going like, why on earth did I do this? People told me not to do this. Why oh, did I do this? Mortified, this yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was really, really low. And it's so funny because I'm like, it's all you fucking bitches that go, don't bring up children, don't bring up as right. much as yeah. well. You're right. actually bringing up not only the children but a very sensitive topic right. that you have no idea about. And Emily, sorry, this really annoyed me, Emily, no, who works with that, like, Innocence Project, Mm. And then she's mm. the audacity. Going like, oh, well, the police wouldn't lie. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Totally contradicts everything she did. stands for. Girl. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. What her platform. Her yeah. platform. It Emily was, was just looking for a moment to solidify her spot next season. Yeah. That's what well, it's you like. know, yeah. she did have some really interesting storylines this season, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The shade. Oh, uh, the shade. Oh God! I mean, there was no storyline, and you, you know what really drove me up a wall is when they said, "Oh, well, the police never falsify reports." I'm like, there are dozens, thousands of cases Thou millions. in America, millions. tens of thousands. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like, really? And then to yeah. like, then to like, be on the side of the perpetrator and say he was so hurt, he got tased, he fell mm -hmm. over, and his neighbors witnessed it, and they were so embarrassed. And I love Katie because she was just so cool, calm, and collected and said, uh, mm. were you there? Right. Yeah. But there. the other thing as well is, like, there was, like, I don't know if they, like, watched the news, but there was, like, this massive movement called Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> right? the police in America kind of have a bit of a reputation as being racist. And Absolutely. she's Asian. Yeah. So yeah. if this yeah. dude who's, like, yelling at her is a white guy and you have two cops who are racist, Mm -hmm. Of course, they're going to falsify and do whatever they need to do to like mm -hmm. make right. their lives easier, you know? Yeah, of course. I'm just, in the deep south. Yeah. In the deep and south also, in America. Yeah. And also, this was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, like, we think wow. we have a problem with racism in the police now. force now. <laughs> 10 Good years point. ago. Yeah. Good point. You can believe me. And even today, there was a case in Ohio where the seven year old Asian man, they like, literally took a seven-year-old and hit his head to the concrete like yeah. do you mean a seven-year-old asian child 70 Se seven zero oh, seven year old man seven no no they slammed like, him what? police officer body slammed him to the concrete for nothing mm -hmm. yeah absolutely for nothing. nothing. that's an asian man in you know ohio yeah. and, there, and he has cancer so i doubt this man Ugh. would have fought you back if you just arrested him if that's what... right. so there's a lot of that i mean i've even experienced it in la I, this is 2015 i was sitting outside my apartment on the phone and two cops came over and i had a really thick beard like it was big and not not defending their behavior but then they came over and they said what are you doing you're very loud on the phone i'm like what <laughs> like i'm on bluetooth I, and i live across and they're like can we see your id to confirm and i was like i don't have to give you my id like to confirm mm -hmm. i can sit on the street it's not even that late and they're like, we're going to have to search your trunk. And then I started getting nervous because they were using flashlights. And so I let them look, but that's also illegal. Like you can't yeah. be looking in my trunk. No, so no. even me, who's not like someone, I can pass for white, like I'm getting her. Like, so I can only imagine right. if you're yeah. anything other Amir, than white. Like, do you not listen to Jay-Z? The glove compartment is locked. So is the trunk in the back. I know my rights. So you're going to need a yeah. warrant for that. <laughs> oh, yes. You're right, honey. You're right. You're right. Oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, no. That, yeah. I don't know why that, 
Well, I do yeah. know why, but that scene really bothered me. It, it was like those two. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just it just felt like attacking somebody and yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it was so wild because like then we moved on to like the Jen stuff and Ryan and I was like, how is this the light part of the segment? <laughs> like, oh my God, it's just like the FBI and $16 million. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow. He didn't have a Bank of America account. What do you want him to do? Like, exactly. I love Jen. <laughs> I love Jen. She's lovely. Right. She is. She just seems like, it's like you could literally, I feel like with Jen, she's just got such a sweet heart and she she's does. so believing yeah. mm-hmm. that you could be like, no, pelicans are pink. And she's like, oh, okay, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and she'd like, just want to feed them, you know? She just uh-huh. seems like the loveliest person and very trusting. Bless but, her. Yeah, it was yeah. weird that that was like a the light, light part. <laughs> yeah. I also feel like as well, there's something that kind of annoys me, I think, when people bring full storylines that weren't anything to do with the show Mm, and then they bring them like into a reunion because like the the paparazzi thing was part of the show last season right but then you're bringing things from like 10 years ago and like bringing storylines that we nobody in the public knows about unless Mm -hmm. you know you religiously dive deep dive into bravo like but it's like it's not, that's not kind of fair game, you know? Absolutely. You're right. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And when I worked as a publicist, we would call paparazzi regularly on our B, C, A list clients. It didn't even matter what <laughs> level you were. You wanted that. You wanted to come out of CVS after a divorce and look bomb. So we would call, it was not like, right. this is not rocket science. And I've seen Heather at, she always goes to these restaurants in LA. They have the paparazzi lined up. You're at Craig. Yeah. They literally mm-hmm. asked me. What's your name? I'm like, I'm trying to eat some food, like out of my way. Yeah, like, I'm getting a you know? schnitzel. I want yeah. some Parmigiano. Just leave me alone. Yeah. But the thing mm-hmm. as well is I think her husband is like very fame hungry. He does like botched mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's even admitted on the show how much he loves getting his photo taken and how much he loves this. And <laughs> well, there I'm you like, go. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, those two are so like- famous. I mean, how could paparazzi not follow him around? You know. <laughs> The new she lives by Drake. Now, right there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Drake's her best I friend. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Drake. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on. Like, it's too oh, much. Goodness. And then her being like, my son sold the property on his own. I'm like, Josh Allman mm-hmm. literally said from his mouth, I gave him a job because I sold the most expensive house in Orange County. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. let's not pretend he's not a Nepo baby. No shade, but yeah. he didn't sell this house mm-hmm. on his own. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I, I, I love when really rich delusional people like that are like, oh, I just love how independent my child is. They're out there in the world making it on their own. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, girl, shut yeah. up. No. Like yeah, a lot of people aware. can't even just afford like college for their kids. You know, the right. fact that you can send them to college and you pay for their housing, that alone puts them in the top 5%. So don't tell me they've made it on their own, you know? No, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. absolutely not. Um, what about uh, Salt Lake City? What do you think about Bronwyn? Cause I'm loving her. I actually do like her. I find it um, an interesting play, I guess to go on the cast trip without Heather. Um, mm, I feel mm-hmm. like I, I, I have absolutely no basis to back this up, but I imagine after her proof, timeline, screenshots, last year, Heather's head's probably quite big. <laughs> I've seen nothing or heard nothing that is evidence to that, mm-hmm. but I just go, if you're a housewife, obviously a lot of housewives, you know, 99% are there to feed up their ego, you know, and things like mm. that. And that was such a massive storyline. It rocked the Bravo world. Um, so, and she was kind of the hero out of it. So I would imagine that taking on Heather in like what the first like five episodes and then actually cutting her out of a cast trip is quite a ballsy move Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and i don't know it'll be interesting to see how that goes the one thing that she does have which housewives froth over is actual real money that's Mm. true yeah 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 Mm -hmm. so heather might be quick to forgive when she finds out you know that she's looking at 10 million dollar earrings and spent 20 (laughs) grand a night on their rental 
<sighs> that might help. That might help. Uh -huh. And I saw it on her page. She was at the Valentino Paris shows. Like, unless you're Lisa Rinna, like you're not at the Paris fashion show. Mm. Like that's yeah. not just New York Fashion Week. That's like you are, and and whether or not they invited her, if you spend a certain amount of Valentino, because I have a friend who um, works there, they will you'll get to go to the shows. But you have to spend like mm. two, three hundred thousand a year. So it's no mm. joke. Like mm -hmm. so. You know her she also understands how to be a housewife she wore those like hot pants with the jacket walking mm. into like a restaurant no pants in utah like she kind of knew what she was doing mm -hmm. which i appreciate yeah mm -hmm. oh but like how much does her fucking husband hate it hates being he there hates mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. i'm like He's probably yeah. sitting there going like, I wish I got that fucking prenup if I knew you were doing this stupid show so I could divorce <laughs> you and you could go and be a housewife. <laughs> That's so true. The yeah. only house husband I've seen this annoyed is Shane, like Emily's husband. And he's better oh, now, but initially oh, yeah. he hated being there. Yeah, he but do you know what? I think I actually kind of liked watching Shane like that because that's exactly like my husband. He what? like, I don't know if you remember Amira, but like, I w I'd given birth to Ava, I was engaged, and he had still never once been on my Instagram stories or a photo or anything. The that. only photos that were public were paparazzi photos of him. And I got to the stage where I was like, babe, it's just getting a bit awkward now. Like, there's actually conspiracy theories on Reddit that I got the sperm from someone in Southern <laughs> Charm and you don't exist. Oh, and like, wow. I was like, can, yeah. Can you just let me post a photo? Um, so I actually really enjoyed Shane's squirm because I knew that he was like my husband and just like hated everything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can see this guy like, but also I'm like, you are like, I know you're old, but you still know how the internet works. Go watch yeah. a few episodes of Housewife. And if you don't want your wife to be on a show where all the women bitch, don't like, go on a trip with all the bitchy women who bitch at each other with cameras on them. Like you, you must've known what you were getting into. Like the fact that he's like, there'll be no fighting on this cast trip. I'm like, boo. boo. <laughs> oh, Where oh, are man. you? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is housewives. Yeah. We're here for the fights, you know? Yeah. We love the fights. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're trying to put gasoline on the fire, not put it out. We're not trying totally. to, but you know, God bless Angie. She was in the background when he was telling um, uh, Lisa's husband that you have to go home. She was in the background. Did you see her with her sunglasses? She was like listening. She was like, that was the better than the whole interaction. Just seeing her back there lurking. It was so yeah. good. You know, that interaction gave me not to the extent, but a little bit of Tom and Erica vibes. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. a little bit. Like yeah, just that very that. like, yeah, I have spoken. This is how it is. And mm -hmm. she like immediately put her head down. Yes, yes. And I was like, mm, don't know if I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't have thought of that, but I like that. Because it kind of makes it like, he's kind of like, even in the pool, he was like, I can hear the fight. And I'm like, okay, like they can argue. Like people are allowed to argue. Like even if they're mm -hmm. not on Housewives. They can argue. Yeah, and do you know the other thing I picked up as well is like, I'm not saying he's a narcissist because I haven't seen enough of him, but those narcissistic tendencies, like one of the other house husbands was like, look at our wives, how well did we do? And then he turned it around and went, no, look how well they did. And it's just that little narcissistic trait where you can't just let something not be about you. You've got to spin it. And he spun it so quick. And he's like, no, no, they're the lucky ones. We're not lucky. They're lucky. And I'm like, mm. wow. Ooh. I if don't love gonna, that. Yeah. yeah. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I find that interesting. I just, with the th issue I have is like their staircase has no railing and they have dogs <laughs> and they have an old. Why man. do you think that is, Amir? Makes me nervous. If he falls off the staircase, <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. She's set for life. 50, 50, honey, 100%. Oh, mm -hmm. She's set for Nobody life. Nobody that age should not have a staircase in there, uh, not have like a banister on their staircase. I'm sorry. That's intentional. That's her retirement plan, Amir. Yeah. yeah I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you have the rickety I chairs. She has a display <laughs> with the rickety chairs. I'm like, that could fall on him. <laughs> Yeah. Babe, that house is a death trap and it ain't uh -huh. for her. 
on purpose. Okay. That's what the 13 mm -hmm. dogs are for. They'll be running through, smash into the chairs, chairs come yeah. down, yeah. he's drinking yeah. coffee, boom. The dogs are in on it. Oh, yeah. 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 They, they've even got all the matching outfits, you know, like that little wonder <laughs> team. They're like, we will get him. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Little accomplices in those pajamas. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my By God. the way, anyone who's listening, this is just dark humor. I don't sure. want him to die. Don't fucking tweet at me. No, no, I'm no, just no, having no. a Laugh. <laughs> we're just being Astrid. funny shits and giggles that's it we're not yeah we wish no harm on that man none not at all not mm -hmm. at all at um, least not I know as much as Bronwyn does yeah she <laughs> we don't know what's in her heart but what's in our heart is a joke pure so we're, yeah we're, we're pure of heart we're pure of heart that is so funny um I know New York we don't even have to talk about it but no. it's just it's just hard to like muddle I, through it I we, love we, we already talked about it. I told you I have a pavlova in my fridge. We've talked about That's it. it. We've talked about it. We're done with it. We're done. Moving on. Um, tell me about Potomac because me and Monica were talking about Wendy and we feel like she doesn't fit in. How do you feel about Wendy? Like I feel like she's not, she's out of place. I don't, I don't feel like she's ever fit in though. Mm. Hello. I was really, yeah, yeah surprised yeah. when she got brought back for season two. Firstly, like, I don't know. If like if you have all that like you know with your PhDs and everything like go use those like yeah. you have lives you mm -hmm. know you're supposed yeah. to have like but then it was like she morphed into it with her fucking two week candle or whatever I was like <laughs> girl go use your PhDs how yeah. long did that take yeah. you to get you know right yeah. but yeah. I don't know yeah I don't um I I honestly I'm not a massive Wendy fan. Like, I don't yeah. think she's a really yeah. gross person Same like here. Tamara or Ramona, but Wendy, Ramona. I'm just like, she, yeah. Um, I just, like, I just don't really get much from her, you know? Right. Yeah. We were saying the same thing. Mm. This season. She definitely is standing out like the, the odd man out this season. I mean, there's yeah. no storyline as usual, but it's more, I guess because the new girls are so uh, they're fitting in so well that mm. it seems to be pushing her out more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, cause I feel like, I don't know. There's something with Potomac where they're all like super shady. They throw so much mud mm -hmm. at each other. They mm -hmm. cross those lines like every single episode and they all just know that that's just work and they kind of come back together. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I don't know with Wendy, even when she's trying to do it, it just doesn't work for some the reason. Execution fails yeah. miserably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's trying too hard. It's like Zen mm -hmm. Wen and, and making it about her birthday when no one cares. No, cared. no one cared. Yeah. I want to hear from Mia. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I know. Mia's nasty. Mia's mm -hmm. nasty, but in a good way. Like, I kind of like her. I'm like, mm -hmm. Joyce says like too much and it's below the belt. So, how do you feel about Mia? So Mia is probably one of the types, like, I don't think we would be friends, but I find her entertainment value mm -hmm. good on Housewives. Right, right. You know, yeah. I yeah. definitely think she's one of the ones that always goes too far. Mm. Um, yeah, that too. But then, yeah, but then, you know, she's super messy. I, I kind of like that she just owns her shit. Mm -hmm. And like, even the other day, she's like, that's how you keep two men. And it's like, okay, <laughs> ouch. Thanks for the lesson. Yeah, exactly. Girl. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I would honestly prefer to nap and just keep the one. Thank you. <laughs> right. One's you enough. got it, girl. You got it. <laughs> yeah. So looking at R-H-O-C, Shannon's DUI, compared yeah. to Karen Huger's DUI, how do yeah. you think the two, it differs with the two, the way they're handling things? Well, they're bipolar in how they're handling things. Right. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you could not get more different. Yeah. I feel like Shannon has, you know, look, I don't think there's any debate that Shannon has an issue with alcohol. Like, even when we saw on the, you know, the reunion, like, it is talked about every reunion. She, like, I'm like, firstly, Shannon, girl, you got to get another set of friends. Mm. Get the ones you film with and mm -hmm. your real friends. Right. When you get drunk and you want to bitch, call your real friends. Don't call the ones on camera. Cause it's come up so much like, right or like call like a psychic hotline yeah. like phone a friend five bucks a minute or something like that yeah. like, stop doing yeah. this like, 
Like you're doing the same shit and you're expecting a different result. And the same thing is happening. Everyone keeps bringing it up. So Shannon, if you're listening, you can call me, girl. Mm -hmm. I'll have a glass of wine with you. It'll be lovely. And you can call me back 10 minutes later and tell me the same story. Um, (laughs) I feel like Shannon is like owning what she did yeah yeah you know she yeah. messed up mm-hmm. um where it's like this is the second time for karen and i actually like had to rewind it the other day because she was like when mia was saying they were out and drinking brown liquor and then karen's like oh yeah i got in the car and drove but i pulled over and i'm like did you just admit to like a wow. third time drink driving yeah. like yeah it must be yeah. normal to you which is so mm-hmm. crazy because that can't be like that's her you life. Know, yeah. yeah, I almost feel like with Shannon, it could have actually been a once-off because right. they obviously had such a psychotic fight. Um, she was three times over the limit, so she was wasted, um, and she drove her house, like her house into a car, her car into a house. So it's like but one of those situations where you're going through that kind of emotional trauma and you're trying to escape, you know, I can see somebody who doesn't drink and drive doing that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Whereas Karen's like already got a DUI. She's now got her second DUI. She just admitted on camera she's drunk, drunk, driven, like from a boozy night out. It's like you didn't, you know, like I remember one time I'd had two glasses of wine, but like not in two hours here. And um, Ava had like a rash come up on her back. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, like, if I'd gotten in the car and driven that day, it's like, okay, there was almost extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. I ended up moving, like, my baby seat into my neighbour's car and getting her to drive me up kind of thing. But with Karen, it doesn't seem to be extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're going out for a messy, boozy girls' night and then you're driving home. Exactly. Which is Mm -hmm. fucked. And I really don't like this thing with Karen where she's like, I could have been killed. It's like, bitch, no one cares. Right. If you can't no. yeah. fucking kill yourself while you drink driving, that's right. on you. What I care about is you running into someone like me with a people. three-year-old. That, right. Yeah, that, that I'm right. not okay with. Like, that's what she's not getting. She's not understanding that at I all. I don't think she ever will. Yeah. No, no. It's Zero nurses. remorse. Yeah. And the Which ultimatum with the girls, um, are you my friend? Because if you're my friend, you're not going to bring this up on camera. Excuse me? Mm. Yeah, no, you can't do that. No, no, no. That is not okay. Mm -mm, Absolutely not. Um, We could talk to you forever. You have to come back. But I want to ask (laughs) you She's amazing. You're the best. (laughs) Thank you. I've had so much fun. Fun. It's the best. It's the best. Um, You have to come back. But I wanted to ask you, one thing that drives me nuts about Below Deck Sailing Yacht is the angle of the boat. Does that make you crazy (laughs) as like a chief stew where you're looking at everything fall out of the cabinets and... The room, I'm like, do they, like, what? I know the guests love it, but it just drives me nuts. I think, I think what's happened potentially, I don't know this for a fact, but Parsifal, they use the same, like, they use the same sailing boat over and over again. We never did that. I think we used Sirocco twice in the five seasons I was on. We'd change boats every season. So I think they've almost gone, like, we're only going to be basically chartering this out to Bravo. And then maybe it doesn't move for the rest of the year. So the owner doesn't want to put money in it to fix the issues so that when the boat tilts, it's actually stowed properly and the cupboards work. So I reckon the owner's just being a tight ass and he's not fixing the boat. And Bravo are probably like, please don't fix the boat. It's like (laughs) at least three minutes of every episode. Don't fix the boat. So funny. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, one last question about Below Deck that just came to me is if you were to like kind of assemble your like dream team of a boat, like, can you give me like, you don't have to give like full boat, but like three people and then one person that's, I mean, I, I think I know who that is that's off the boat, but who are three that oh, yeah. you need to have? So I would do Captain Glenn, Aisha, mm-hmm. Anastasia, Kiko, Julia, Tiffany. Ooh. This is a good boat. Mm-hmm. I love I that. like Wes. I really like Wes. He'd be there too. Oh, that's the, pretty much the whole crew. That's the whole crew. You got it. That's amazing. Who's in the tugboat? 
<laughs> it depends. Is the tugboat um, sinking or? <laughs> sinking. It's sinking. <laughs> if it's sinking, it's definitely Malia in there. Oh, I love it, girl. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for having thank me. You, you, you are you amazing, so Hannah. Just Aww. absolutely amazing. Well, I'm here to talk Bravo shit whenever you need. Right. We love, love to that. hear it. Yeah, we, we love to, to hear it. We have to come back for sure. Thank you. For sure. Yeah, and tell everyone amazing. where they can follow you. So I'm at Hannah Ferrier 234 on Instagram. I don't really tweet anymore since it turned into X. So yeah, just come to Instagram. It's where the funniest. I don't TikTok. I'm too old. So <laughs> just Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, follow her. It's great. And um, and your cameos too. Book a cameo. Absolutely. So. Yeah. yeah, especially well with Christmas it. coming up. I actually, honestly, am so shocked that I still get so many bookings because, like, I think the other day I looked and I was like number twenty-four on the Bravo like wow. leaderboard on cameo. I'm like, that yeah, is wild, you, girl. I Good for you. Bravo in like five yeah. years, but mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy doing them, and I have a lot of fun, and I'm really cheeky and stuff like that. So I think I get really good reviews, which is why people are still doing it. So yeah, book a cameo. It's cute. See, that's real impact, right? Last <laughs> yeah. day. So you go, girl. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Thanks All so much besties. for having me. Thank you. Bye, besties. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Hannah. We love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was awesome. Perfect. That She's really great. good. She had a lot of good takes. Um, there might be something in there that I can try potentially give to entertainment.